Hmm. <laughs> Look at that! Konami announces a new gameplay mechanic for Yu-Gi-Oh! Link Summoning! Please be quiet. I am trying to consume my delicious omelet. In related news, in rare killing, chimpanzees cannibalize former leader. <laughs> Talk about monkey business, am I right? Would you quiet down? I am having a cup of water. You know I haven't made a new video in a while. I wish I had any ideas what to do. Do you have any ideas for what to video for? Ah, oh, my God, Jesus! The leakage. What is that? Try helping the weeping infant by providing it with one of my many rods, such as this one. With yeah, I got that. Not um, fucking wait. Shut up, stupid baby. I. Christ! What is this? Like a puppet with a with, with a dumb gimmick? Some kind of a gimmick? Puppet? A bright idea. Who's ready for some fan services? Gimmick puppets are a product of Yu-Gi-Oh's Excel and their infamously creepy artwork represents a very obvious homage to Bakura's occult team deck from the days of Duel Monsters, primarily Dark Necrofear, I would imagine. But sadly, their playstyle does not actually live up to their name, as in the archetype is not gimmicky in any particular way and in fact is, in my opinion, one of the most basic, boring and uninteresting XE spammers of the Zexel era, with their only unique aspect being said artwork. However, boring doesn't necessarily have to mean bad, I mean Teller Knight's one world's once for crying out loud. So let's dig into the toy box of Quattro the Master of Puppets and see how the joints connect and bend, and if links fuck them over. Their first member is this dashing fellow with a side of back problems, Gimmick Puppet Gear Changer. It's a level 1 earth machine with 100 attack and defense, cannot be special summoned from the deck, and once per turn, you can target one other Gimmick Puppet monster you control, this card's level becomes the level of that monster. Gear Changer is somewhat of a debatable choice for the archetype, because while it does potentially give you access to a rank 4 and a rank 8 pool, it has two major downsides that bring it down. First of all, it's an earth attribute monster for some inexplicable reason, whereas almost every other Gimmick Puppet is dark, so the usage of allure of darkness in the deck might potentially be hindered, and while the earth attribute would actually help with making Mrs. Radiant by using machine duplication on Gear Changer, they went out of their way to actively disable you from summoning it from the deck. I guess this could sorta of be understandable at the time of this card's release because they didn't want the rank 8 lineup to be so easily accessible, but the card still relies on you already controlling a high level gimmick puppet monster so it has a kind of an inherent balance to it. A bit too balanced if you ask me, possibly a bit outdated as well, so it's a very questionable card to consider running. Their next member is the level 4 gimmick puppet Humpy Dumpy Boy. It's a dark monster with 0 attack and 100 defense, and when it's normal, special summon, you can special summon one gimmick puppet monster from your hand, but you can only use this effect once per turn. Before I get into the effect, I just wanna point out that I'm using a proxy image because the gold rarity the TCG decided to slap on this thing makes it look like its name is smeared with piss. Anyway, this one is most certainly a staple, seeing how it lets you easily nab a level 4 from your hand for instant rank 4, or a level 8 if you have any additional setup to make a rank 8. It used to be able to make a Laval Val chain to dump some grave dependent gimmick puppets from the deck, but because we have one too many monsters with graveyard effects these days, that is no longer the case. Still though, definitely worth running a 3 since it gives you a use for dead level 8s in your hand, and in a pinch he can be a decent target for machine dupe. Next up is Gimmick Puppet Gimp Suit McFuckhands, alternatively known as Scissor Arms. Fuck you! It's a level 4 dark machine with 1200 attack and 600 defense, and when it's normal summon, you can send one Gimmick Puppet monster from your deck to the graveyard. Basically, an Armageddon Knight for the archetype, Scissor Arms is worth running to set up your graveyard as fast as possible. And that's about all there is to it. Don't get me wrong, the one gimmick puppet monster with a good graveyard effect is possibly also the best main deck gimmick puppet monster in general, it's just that scissor arms can occasionally be dead in your hand if there's no decent targets left to dump. Still, that's not nearly a kind of a downside that would warrant not running the card, so feel free to main deck two or three of these. Next up is Gimmick Puppet Destroy, which may just be the first case of a triple pun in a card name. <laughs> It's a level 4 with 1200 attack and 2000 defense and the following effect. You can target one gimmick puppet monster in the field, destroy it. This effect can only be used once while this card is face up on the field. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon one or two gimmick puppet monsters from your hand. I can see where they were coming from, given the fact that the card can destroy itself to apply its effect and then let you summon two level 8s from your hand, which does sound like a decent idea if you're thinking about the card in the vacuum of your opening hand. Gimmick puppets don't exactly tend to produce too much advantage after they already 
they empty their hand, and there are way better and way less risky things you could be doing with your monsters than waiting for a destroy to appear. It's not awful, and again, it can produce decent results with a good hand, but relying on having multiple gimmick puppets in said hand just so you could blow up your own monster to summon them makes it a lot more inconsistent than it seems at first. Pair this up with the fact that the levels of said monsters may be differing, and destroy is left as a one-off at most, if you really feel like playing it just that much. Gimmick Puppet Egghead is their last level 4 and also their worst haircut, and it's an Earth attribute monster because... Mm -hmm. It has 1600 attack and 1200 defense, and once per turn you can discard one Gimmick Puppet monster to activate one of these effects. Inflict 800 damage to your opponent, or this card's level becomes 8. Alright, so here's a fun fact. The burn damage effect on the little egg boy over here is literally the only main deck Gimmick Puppet monster effect that's not specifically intended for Xyz spamming, meaning that the main deck versatility of this archetype is limited exclusively to badly filling up the field with level 8 monsters, and a single piece of 800 burn damage when you're not hipster enough to use poison of the old man. The level switching effect sounds decent, but much like Gear Changer, it relies on you already controlling monsters to be of any use, except that this one also has the audacity to ask you for a discard before he does it. You could make the argument that it helps you set up the graveyard, but that still implies you need to be holding some very specific monsters for the effect to pay off. This bitch slow! Yay! <laughs> Their first level 8 also happens to be their best main deck monster, Gimmick Puppet Dreary Doll, carrying the aesthetics of waking up after a Friday Night City Crematorium House greet and beat Mangala Smackdown with 8 ball in the backyard of a- I don't know what the fuck I just said. Dreary Doll has 0 attack in defense, and if it's in your graveyard, you can banish one other Gimmick Puppet monster from the graveyard to special summon this card. However, you can only use this effect once per turn, and you cannot exceed summon any monsters using this card except Gimmick Puppet monsters. One word that comes to mind when talking about Dreary Doll is reusable. I mean, yeah, it's once per turn, you need a lot of graveyard presence, and the only thing you can summon with it are gimmick puppets, but still, it's something that enables recovery and gives you access to the archetypal Xyz monsters and doesn't require too much setup to activate its effect. On top of all this, it's an excellent target for Machine Doof, which can potentially result in two Xyz monsters, haha, <laughs> silly me, I mean one Link monster. Anyway, with as much graveyard setup as there is for this archetype, including but not limited to Scissor Arms, Trade In, Machina Fortress and Foolish Burial, there is no reason to run any less than three of the dolls, considering it's one of the archetype's only decent playmakers. Next up is Gimmick Puppet Twilight Joker. He only jokes after the sunset. He's a level 8 with 800 attack and 1600 defense, and when a Gimmick Puppet monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can banish that monster, and then special summon this card from your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. So, among the numerous problems I have with this card, these are the most prevalent. First of all, its stats are way too horrible for its summoning condition, given that he'll most likely appear during the opponent's battle phase, where they can just proceed to run over it with anything stronger than a goddamn metal fish. Second, it banishes the destroyed monster from the graveyard, so Dreary Doll can't make any use of it, and third, a gimmick puppet monster getting destroyed by battle is something that barely ever happens. All of their weak-ass main deck monsters are used for an Xyz summon before the opponent's turn even comes, and all of their Xyz monsters have really high attack or defense values, therefore they will most likely be getting removed by other means. I won't even bother going into any more detail about this one. Is that why it's called Joker? Is this... is this their idea of a joke? Mr. Fucking Comedy over here, Mr. Mr. Big Joke Man. Tell me, tell me some more jokes, you fuck. Come on, Mr. King of Humor over here. Get fucked, idiot. Gimmick Puppet Magnadol is their next level 8, it has 1000 attack and defense, and if your opponent controls a monster while all monsters you control are gimmick puppets, you can special summon this card from your hand. Due to its level and the archetype's uneven nature, Magnadol can occasionally be bricky, but there's still a lot to like here, primarily the simple summoning condition. Along with Dreary Doll, this one makes for the easiest rank 8s, and thankfully it's not once per turn, so you can build more field presence with multiple copies. Now would be a decent time to mention an excellent tech choice, that being Gearspring Spirit, which is a level 8 machine with 100 attack and defense that you can special summon if the only monsters in your graveyard are machine types. Also, once per turn, you can reduce the attack of an opponent's monster to zero. Not only that this might as well be a gimmick puppet monster, considering how amazingly it combos with them, but it's also a dark attribute, so it's another target for a lure of darkness. Sadly, it cannot be machine duped, as it needs to be special summoned from the hand first, but both of these are still very good choices for the average gimmick puppet deck focusing on rank 8 production. The next monster is Gimmick Puppet Shadow Feeler. Yes, I know, the Human Centipede comparison has been made numerous times before, but to me this always just looked like two guys leaning over and rubbing their heads against a butthole with arms. It's not that scary. Ooh. It's a level 8 with 1000 attack and defense, cannot be destroyed by battle, and when you take direct damage from an attack while this card is in the graveyard, you can special summon it in face-up attack position and take 1000 damage. You can only use this effect once per turn, and if this card is an Xyz material will be sent to the graveyard, banish it instead. The effect is sorta of like a prototype level 8 trick clown, given that you 
summon it from the graveyard by taking damage, except you can only use this one during the opponent's turn. Its battle protection is surprisingly enough relevant, considering that the opponent will be stuck in the battle phase for the time being, and would have to devote any remaining resources during main phase 2 if they wanted to get rid of the card. Sadly, it's pretty much useless without graveyard setup, banishes itself when detached, and even when it's summoned, it's in attack position, so you STILL TAKE THE DAMAGE! However, in a pinch it can be decently helpful and enable your plays next turn, so running one of them might work out decently. The last main deck Gimmick Puppet Monster is Gimmick Puppet Nightmare, appropriately named because you don't see these kinds of BDSM parties in real life. Or maybe I'm just going to the wrong ones. Anyway, it's a level 8 with 1000 attack and 2000 defense, and you can special summon it by tributing one face-up Xyz monster you control. You can only special summon it this way once per turn, and when you do, you can special summon one Gimmick Puppet Nightmare from your hand or graveyard. If this card is special summoned, you cannot special summon any monsters for the rest of this turn except Gimmick Puppet monsters. Those who watched my anniversary top 10 worst archetype support cards video probably recognize this fellow, as he was on the list for a very good reason. I won't dwell too long on it since I said everything I wanted to say in that video, but to sum it up, tributing an Xyz monster is way too costly, it requires you to specifically have more copies of Nightmare in your hand or graveyard, so that's another layer of setup to invest in for the card to be useful, and on top of it all, you're limited to summoning only gimmick puppet monsters for that turn, as if the card didn't bust your balls enough already with the summoning condition. The only upside is that you could replace an Xyz monster without materials or whose effect is negated with another one, but if there are cards that give you more Xyz monsters without getting rid of your existing ones, then why even bother? If Shadow Feeler was a mediocre prototype trick clown, then this is a god-awful prototype rat peer. Now it's time to move on to the extra deck, starting with number 15, Gimmick Puppet Giant Grinder. Oh, okay, so a forklift is an acceptable crotch, but a rocket salvo is not. Fine, I'll keep this in mind for future submissions. It's a rank 8 with 1500 attack and 2500 defense, requires any two level 8 monsters, and up to twice per turn during your main phase 1. You can detach one Xyz material from this card and target one special summon monster your opponent controls, destroy it, then if it was an Xyz monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. If you played literally any rank 8 focus deck during the Zex era, you may remember this as one of the definite staples at the time, seeing how it offered some very efficient field clearing, and even some potentially fat damage output if the destroyed targets happen to be Xyz monsters. Nowadays, it's not as good due to the amount of protection and floating in the game, but it's definitely worth running in a gimmick puppet deck, along with the two Xyz spiders, seeing how you can easily go into them from a single rank 8, ignoring the need for extra monster zones. After that, we have the monster's chaos version, number C15, Gimmick Puppet Giant Hunter. Grinder to Hunter, what is this, World of Warcraft? Giant Hunter is a rank 9 with 2500 attack and 1500 defense, requires 3 level 9 monsters, or, you know, a rank up magic. <coughs> And once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card to target and destroy one card your opponent controls, and if that card was a monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack. The best quality of Giant Grinder, that being the twice per turn clause, has sadly been nerfed in the Chaos version, but replaced with the ability to destroy any card on the field, which is nice, it's just that I don't feel this is particularly worth ranking up into unless you really couldn't pop something with Grinder. It's nice and it allows for some potential burn damage, but a certain other gimmick puppet Chaos monster might be a lot better target for a rank up magic. So here's number 40, Gimmick Puppet of Strings. It's a rank 8 with 3000 attack and 2000 defense, again requires any two level 8 monsters and once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, place one string counter on each face up monster on the field except this card. If you do, during the opponent's end phase, destroy all monsters with string counters and if you do, inflict 500 damage to the opponent for each monster destroyed. This used to be a halfway decent generic rank 8, but nowadays it's basically the world's most inefficient field wipe. Pulling out a random counter spreading effect out of nowhere is usually not a sign of a good card, further signified by the fact that you're betting on both this card and the monsters you place counters on to live through yours as well as the opponent's next turn just to blow all of them up and deal some burn damage. Its best quality is that it's a 3000 beater, but there are still rank 8 monsters with the same if not more attack and better effects out there. However, I did say this is an excellent target for a rank up magic, and here's how. Number C40, Gimmick Puppet of Dark Strings is a rank 9 with 3300 attack and 2000 defense, and when it's special summoned, destroy all monsters with string counters, then deal damage to your opponent equal to the highest original attack among those monsters. Once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, place one string counters on each face-up monster your opponent controls. With just a simple rank up, Dark Strings makes up for all the sins of the original, providing a quick board wipe as well as draw power and burn damage. It's kind of weird that it also places string counters itself without being able to do anything with them outside of being summoned, but I guess it works in case you manage to make another C40. Good luck with that. The rank up magics I would recommend in this case are Quick Chaos, for effect dodging if anything, Argent Chaos Force for recycling, and Numeron Force for negating everything. If you're building your gimmick puppets with ranking up in mind, Dark Strings is definitely something to work towards. Their last rank 8 is number 88. Uh, 
Subtle. Gimmick Puppet of Leo. It has 3200 attack and 2300 defense, requires 3 level 8 monsters and once per turn. If you have no cards in your spell and trap card zone, you can detach 1 Xyz material from this card and if you do, place 1 destiny counter on this card. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this effect. When 3 destiny counters are on this card, you win the duel. And before 3 counters are on it, you lose the duel. Well, talk about pulling random counters out of nowhere and turning it into an overkill. It's not even a good kind of overkill though. This thing has no protection to speak of, heavily prevents you from guarding yourself with floodgates, completely disables your battle phase and requires 3 monsters just to be brought out. When Aminaga was a miles better 3 counter win condition and still nobody used her, so why would you think people would care about this one? This is by far the worst gimmick puppet Xyz monster, Closely followed by his Chaos version, yes, all of them do have a rank up because anime. Number C88, Gimmick Puppet Disaster Leo, is a rank 9 with 3500 attack and 2500 defense, must be special summoned with the rank up magic targeting number 88, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. It cannot be targeted by card effects and once per turn, you can detach 1 Xyz material from this card to deal 1000 damage to the opponent. During your end phase, if your opponent's life points are 2000 or less and this card has no Xyz materials, you win the duel. Jeez, gimmick puppets, how come your mom lets you have two victory conditions? Disaster Leo's win condition sure lives up to his name, but at least he's a better card than the original. For one, there's decent targeting protection, the burn damage is okay, but outclassed by THE BOY, and he doesn't prevent you from setting back row or attacking. The problem the problem with the win condition though is that after taking 4 turns to deal 4000 damage to the opponent while also being able to attack with a 3500 beater, you probably won the duel already so there's no point in waiting for the effect to go off. The only way I can imagine this condition being met is in a deck specifically designed for cheesing it out which still requires a stupid amount of setup and some really specific combos. In any gimmick puppet deck aiming to use their Xyz potential to the fullest, there's no reason to run any of the two Leos instead of any other better generic rank 8. Their first spell card is Junk Puppet. It's a normal spell that lets you target one gimmick puppet monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but you can only activate it once per turn. Simple, archetypal monster reborn, not much to say about this one. Worth running at 1 or 2, since gimmick puppets already fiddle with the graveyard enough by themselves to make running a third one a potentially bricky choice. One cool thing to do is reviving an Xyz monster and then going into a spider, ranking up without magics be blessed. And their last card is Puppet Ritual. It's another normal spell and has the following effect. If your opponent's life points are at least 2000 higher than yours, you can target two level 8 gimmick puppet monsters in your graveyard, special summon those targets. You can only activate one Puppet Ritual per turn, and you cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card. Zexel had this weird short-lived obsession with life points that made some potentially decent cards complete garbage, and this one continues the legacy. It might have been a decent choice had it not been for the specific life point limitation that requires you to be losing in order to activate it, and the battle phase restriction is there as if just to yell forget about this garbage and just use soul charge. So let's see how the gimmicks rank in the scale. When it comes to consistency, a lot of darkness and trading enable them to cycle through their cards pretty quickly, but the problem lies in actually getting those cards to the field. In the power aspect, they can hit pretty hard, that is, only their Xyz can hit pretty hard, while their main deck monsters can't fight for shit. Their comeback ability lies in graveyard manipulation, but there's not much to it other than Shadow Filler, Dreary Doll and Junk Puppet, their protection is non-existent, and they have a decent amount of versatility to produce generic rank 8s, or even ranks 5 through 9 with marshalling field, but their best monster limits them to their own archetype. Here's a sample decklist of a rank up focused gimmick puppet deck featuring some new cards as well as triple royal decree because fuck soul and warning. Frankly I'm not too much of a fan of gimmick puppets as I already pointed out, as they fall under the category of many Zexel archetypes with their main deck being focused entirely on working towards getting to the extra, so if they get locked out of it, it's game over unless they draw their outs. However, I won't deny that their visual design is remarkable and the concept of ascending from their creepy deformed bases towards majestic looking Xyz monsters has a lot of aesthetic appeal to it. They're not horribly fucked over by links as they don't tend to produce more than one Xyz monster at a time, so I guess you could say they still have a few gimmicks up their sleeve. You know, I've kind of been getting used to this little thing. What do you want to call it? Heavy armored train, Iron Wolf. Ladies, Mental Gen, Railbox and Railcars, thank you for watching this episode of Ranked and Yu-Gi-Oh's Archetype Archive, do support my Patreon if you wanna keep the channel going, and if you pledge a decent amount, you might just be able to request the next archetype to be reviewed. You can send me questions at rank10esk at gmail.com for an upcoming Q&A video, do remember to subscribe, and as always, I'll see you next time.